Hello, my name is Izumi, uh, aka Jamie and Lisa, and I am the writer, director, and creator of Charmed Academics. Today we're going to be talking about directing a Minecraft roleplay, specifically my journey in directing Charmed Academics. So for those who don't know what Charmed Academics is, I have tons of videos explaining it and I'll link them all down in the description if you want to see more about Charmed Academics and kind of learn more about what we're talking about today before watching this video. Feel free to pause the video and come back once you've kind of caught up on what's going on. Now for those who already know about Charmed Academics, let's go ahead and get into how I directed Charmed Academics. We are right now about 25% of the way through production for season one, and so I'm gonna be talking about that first, you know, quarter of production so far. Um, things may change, directing may change, but I do think a lot of these things are very much they're gonna continue. Uh, they're ways I like to direct, um, key things to take into account when you're directing a web series, a show, whatever, um, and how I went about kind of creating the world that um, you guys will soon be exploring. So let's go ahead and get into it. One of the first things I did when um, creating Charmed Academics and Blackthorn specifically was I made mood boards. I made mood boards for all of the uh, places in Charmed Academics. Um, I also made mood boards for every character and I tried to stay pretty true to that character's mood board when they're on screen. So I tried to kind of keep a theme of music and um, lighting and shaders when certain characters are on screen. Of course, for certain scenes, they require certain shaders because if I don't use the certain shaders, it just won't look as good. And so there's fluctuations, but for the most part, I tried to keep it pretty cohesive. When you see a certain character on screen, it feels like that character. You kind of feel more like you're in that space in real life. Um, one thing though that I tried to do was in the first two episodes, you basically only really see Junie's mood board style, if that makes sense. She is the first character you're really introduced to. She is the main character of the series. And so I wanted you guys to get to learn her mood and her aesthetic before anything else. And the reason I did that is because you're gonna be following her story um, and learning about her life and her journey as well as other characters, but specifically she is a very important part of the, sh of the series and I wanted you guys to kind of see into her world more right off the bat than any other character. I chose Dark Academia as the aesthetic for the series. When I fell in love with Dark Academia, I tried to find shows that I liked and movies and books that were that aesthetic and I didn't find anything that really scratched that itch for me. Everything was either way too dark, way too light, or felt like Little House on the Prairie. And so I wanted something that was kind of that good in between that um, really felt like you were going to a prestigious university and you were walking on campus and the autumn leaves were falling just like that kind of that kind of feel but then there's mysteries and um, dark twists that you didn't and you didn't think were coming and so that's kind of the vibe I wanted to go for and dark academia just fit that perfectly um, and I'm really excited to be able to implement that aesthetic into the series So filming and production um, for each episode can be a little bit different, but this is a overall scheme of how production is planned to go and how it has gone so far already. First and foremost, I wrote all of season one in bulk so that I had a grand picture of how the series was going to go and how the series was going to start. Um, there's going to be more than one se uh, season and now I'm writing season two already as I'm still producing season one. Um, but it gave me a good 
outline for I had like those like ideas for what I wanted to happen but if I wouldn't have written the entire season I wouldn't have known what will fit into a singular season and without it feeling slow or without it feeling super fast paced so I wanted to have every something important happens in every scene but it doesn't feel like you're bombarded with information so that's why I wrote the whole, the whole season in bulk um, after that, um, my amazing co-writer, Nixie, she helped me proofread the scripts, and my amazing uh, creative director, Tom Akichi, uh, helped me uh, format the scripts before sending them out to my voice actors, so basically highlighting all the characters' names in the specific colors um, so that it's easier for the voice actors to make sure that they don't miss lines and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, that's uh, the writing portion. And then I went ahead and while I was writing the scripts, I was building the sets for season one. Um, so after all the sets were built, I sent the scripts to the voice actors because I was ready to film. Um, I began filming the, the episode. <laughs> then I began filming the episodes. Um, and then after each episode is fully filmed, I will edit the full episode um, and then proof watch it and then put it in a little folder of season one's episodes because I plan on bulk releasing them. So you guys won't have to wait very long between episodes. They'll be coming out every single week. Um, so once all of season one is filmed, I plan on doing a watch party um, with my like like the final proof watch basically of the whole season one with just cast and crew and then I plan on doing a watch party with my members of my channel, anyone who donated to um, fund season one, as well as all the cast and crew are invited as well. Um, that's for episode one and then I will release the entire series weekly. So that's the production of the episodes. <laughs> Lighting and shaders can really impact a scene. If the scene is like raining, you'll make sure to use a shaders pack that actually shows rain in its fullest potential um, because some shaders packs don't add puddles and some do and some of them add a nice fog effect and it can really change the dynamic and the vibe of a scene by changing your shaders packs. Um, if a scene is meant to kind of be warm and inviting, you'll need like a warm lit environment shader pack, something that is very kind of um, almost happy and um, has that kind of almost orange hue to the lighting rather than a stark white hue to the lighting. If a scene is meant to be chilling, you kind of go the opposite direction, you'll do kind of a blue undertoned white lighting, um, cooler tone, kind of eerie, dark. Um, that kind of texture pack and it's, it's very important to pay attention to that kind of details um, when filming a scene because it can it can really impact um, the emotions portrayed and um, kind of set the mood for the expectation of the scene so it's quite important in my opinion <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video if you want to see behind the scenes of writing charmed academics if that video is already out i will put it at the end of this video if it is not it is coming out this upcoming monday um i'm going to be posting a lot of behind the scenes videos and um vlog style videos before um charmed comes out so you guys will get hyped and you guys will be able to um get ready for the adventure that is charmed academics i'll see you guys in the next video Bye!